Hello everyone. In today's class, we will learn about database connectivity using MySQL and Python. Using this technique, we are allowed to develop the data processing application. In real life application, we always bound to encounter the conditions where we need to deal with the database stored in different database management systems. So, whatever application we consider, whether it's WhatsApp or Facebook or any website or any mobile or the desktop application, almost all applications are data processing applications. In all these applications, basically, we either store the data or we process and retrieve the data or we present the data in user design format. Just like other programming languages, Python also allows us to establish connections to different databases and allows us to access, ma manipulate the data and information stored within it. So, just like other normal programming languages like C and C++, Java, Ruby, Perl, and so on, Python also offers a framework through which we can connect to any of the database management system and we can develop a data processing application. In other words, we can say that we can store the data and information to any of the database management system and as well as we can retrieve, process and display it in, in user-defined format. In this section, we will learn to connect how Python will connect to MySQL and allow us to access the database. To connect Python with MySQL, we need to install separate library named mysql.connector in cPython. So if you are using cPython, then we'll have to install the mysql.connector library as it is not pre-equipped or pre-installed with cPython distribution. So we need to download, install it before getting into the database application program. There are different components available within a data processing application. These components are, as far as Python is concerned, the Python application that is a program we will be designing in order to connect to a database and manipulate the data and information stored in the database. Then we'll have a database, this may be a MySQL or any of the relational database management system. In our study will be focusing on MySQL. Then we also need a Python DB API. We call it as the MySQL connector. That's a framework that allows us to use some readily available functions. This function helps us to transfer the data and information to MySQL as, as well as to fetch the data and information from MySQL, process it and then display as per the user's requirement. So here, a Python application basically uses MySQL current operations that is executing query. Any of the queries can be executed. We can execute insert, update, delete, select, create, alter, drop, or whatever queries are supported by a standard SQL system will be executed with the help of the Python to any of the database management system. So queries will get executed and it will be changing something into the database or we may specify a query, consider an example, a select query. If we execute the select query to a MySQL, the MySQL will be generating the data and information and that data and information will be considered as the result and that result will be transferred back to MySQL application. That's how the MySQL data processing application works. A MySQL connector library is not pre-equipped with CPython. You need to install this library separately on your system. So it is not pre-installed as I have told you just now. You need to install separately from CPython application. So to install, you must first install CPython. If you have not installed CPython application, you need to download and install it from www.python.org. And then follow the steps. After installation, you will have to first search Python 3.7 or 8 version and right click on that application and choose open file location. Once you click on open file location, it takes you to the file explorer. It will show you the list of available support files of the cPython. You can see here some folders and some files. But as far as the installing the libraries are concerned, you'll have to refer to the script folder. You will find a new window open, which will show you the support files and folders of cPython installing. Now select script folder and double click on it. Open it and see the files folders available in it. You can see the list of files loaded over here in the script folder. You don't have to manipulate these files and folders in this installed or installation location. In this wide area, you will just have to right click so that it will open the context menu. And from that context menu, you'll have to choose the new option. Once you point out the new option, you will get 
the text document option from the subcontext menu. You will have to select it. You will have to click on it. Once you click on it, you will find a file is added to the specified folder. You will have to rename it as any name .bat. A .bat is the extension referred to as batch file. And if you create a batch file and after creating, if you open it up, it directly opens in MS doc or command prompt. Because we will have to install the MySQL connector from command prompt of Microsoft Windows. So once a file is renamed as whatever name dot BAT, we'll have to double click on it. So it opens up in MS DOS. Then you will type the command as CD order. Then the next command would be Python dash M PIP install dash dash upgrade PIP as well as CD scripts and PIP install MySQL dot connector. So there are four different commands you have to type. Now the first three commands are actually optional. If you have already upgraded your Python installer package, that is PIP, then you don't have to type it. You can simply type the fourth command, that is pip install MySQL connector. But it is advisable that frequently you upgrade your Python installer package. So in order to install or upgrade the Python installer, first command you have to type as cd order. So it takes out of the script folder. After that, you will have to type the next command as python dash m PIP install dash dash upgrade PIP. After typing this command, if you press enter key, it will show you the steps of downloading the updated PIP package and it will be installing it. You will be getting at the end message as successfully installed PIP, whatever was it. Once the PIP is successfully upgraded, you will have to then type the command as cd space script because you want to move to the script folder now. CD stands for change directory. This is something like we are double clicking a folder and opening it up. But here, this is Microsoft DOS, so we'll have to type command for each and every operation. So we'll have to type CD space scripts in order to open script folder. Once you type CD space scripts, press enter key, so it will take you to the script folder and there you will have to type the actual command for installing the MySQL.connector library using PIP install mysql.connector After typing the command, if you press enter key, it may download the mysql connector from the server and you have to make sure that you are connected to the internet Without internet connection, you will be unable to download the required library from the central server Once the command is executed, it will show you the files are being downloaded It may show you the progress After that, it installs the mysql connector into your system and at the end of the installation, it will show you the message as successfully installed mysql.connector. Once you get the message as successfully installed mysql.connector, that means your mysql connector is installed in your system. Then you will have to check it by opening the Python IDLE. Open the Python IDLE in interactive mode and after opening in interactive mode, you will have to type the command as import space mysql.connector. After typing the command press enter key, you will not be getting the error message. In case the MySQL connector is not installed successfully, then you will be getting error as no module name found MySQL.connect. The MySQL.connector basically refers to a framework which allows us to utilize some ready-made functions. So there are different functions available in this library module. And this all functions basically help us to communicate to a database and manipulate the data and information. So these functions are the connect function, is underscore connected function, cursor function, execute function, accessing record functions like fetch all, fetch one, fetch many, row count, then commit function, rollback function, and close function. So this all functions we'll have to learn in detail in the further section of this chapter. Now we will just have a brief look of all these functions. This connect function allows us to establish connections from Python to MySQL. So if you want to establish connection between Python and MySQL, you have to make sure that you use connect function. Then each connected function is a function which allows us to verify whether the connection is established or is still alive or not. Sometimes it may happen due to some network issues, the connection established may be broken. So this function helps us to verify whether the connection is alive or is not connected or broken. The cursor and execute function. Now these two functions are very 
important because we will be executing the queries whatever queries we consider as far as SQL is concerned like create, update, select, delete, modify and so on all these queries will be executed with the help of the execute function but in order to use execute function we must create a cursor for and cursor can be created with the help of the cursor function if we don't create a cursor then we will not be able to use the execute function now cursor is a concept that basically helps us to deal with the database but we will not be getting into much details of the cursor you will just understand for database connectivity in python and mysql as the cursor is a framework which basically allows us to supply the query or in other words execute the query with the help of the mysql as well as what all data and information are retrieved from mysql that can be stored within the python objects and this all is possible because of the cursor framework then accessing report functions like fetch all fetch one fetch many and row count now when we execute select command in mysql you probably have observed while executing the select command in mysql if the data and information are already stored in table then we'll be getting the columns and we'll be getting the rows there so the result we are getting after executing the command is considered as a result set Assume that we are running the select command in MySQL directly. So output will be displayed there directly in the MySQL command line plan. But suppose we are executing the select command from Python to MySQL. So MySQL will be executing the select command will be generating the same rows and columns. And then it will be sending it back to the Python. So for a Python, it is considered as a result set. And from that result set, now suppose there are 10 records. Now you want all 10 records to be fetched from the result set which is retrieved after executing the select command. Then you will have to use the fetch all command. So when you use fetch all function then all 10 records will be fetched in the program and it will be used as per the convenience of the programmer and the user. But if you want to fetch out of this 10 record you want to fetch first record followed by second followed by third and fourth so on. So at that time instead of fetch all you will have to use fetch one function so fetch one function brings one record at a time if you execute the fetch one again then it brings second record of the result set if you execute the fetch one again then it brings a third record that way it executes that way it brings the first record to the last record one after but if you want to fetch few records at a time then you can use fetch many now this fetch many function accepts an integer number as its parameter and if you give an integer it brings all those number of records suppose you give fetch many 3 so out of this 10 record first 3 records will be fetched and it will be used after that if you use fetch many 2 then next 2 records will be considered for the same the first three records are already fetched by the first statement the fetch many 2 will be bringing the next 2 records from the result set that's how it works we'll be learning all these functions in that in the further section of this chapter then the row count function allows us to count the number of rows or it returns the row number or record number from the result set then we have controlling transaction functions as commit function and rollback function now we need to understand the concept as whenever we execute insert update delete command this command basically changes something in the mysql database in any of the table it will be changing something we may be inserting a record or updating the records or deleting records from the table. So that basically changes. So if you execute insert update delete from Python to MySQL, so MySQL will not be executing it for permanent basis. It will be executing or making changes with the help of that transactions temporarily. And then it waits for the further instructions whether the changes made by the transaction is to be saved permanently or to be old. So we must make sure about when we execute insert update delete command, we should use dot commit function after executing insert update or delete command in MySQL from Python to MySQL. In MySQL, whatever transaction we execute will get stored permanently. This is because the MySQL auto commit property is on. But if we are executing from Python to MySQL, then we have to tell MySQL that this is a command execute it and after that commit it or roll it back so if we execute commit function 
then whatever changes are made by the transaction, whether insert, update, or delete, will be saved permanently in that table. But if we use rollback, then whatever changes are made by the transaction will be reverted back. In case a record is inserted, that will be removed. In case some of the records were removed, then it will be stored back. That's how the commit and rollback function works. So we must make sure after executing insert, delete, and update command from Python to MySQL, we should use the commit function. Without commit function, the changes made by the transaction will not be stored in the table. Then the last function we have that is close function. Now the close function allows us to close the connection. Like the connect function establishes the connection. The close function basically terminates the established connection. If in a database application, if the task is done, so at the end of the application, you make sure you use close function to close the established connection. Otherwise, if you terminate the application, automatically the connection will get closed by the central server of the MySQL. Now we'll learn all these functions of MySQL connector in detail. The first function is connect function. The MySQL connector library module offers connect function, which allows us to establish connection between MySQL database and Python. It successfully connects to a MySQL database and stores connection information in a variable. So after establishing a connection, it stores its property to any variable. We will have to supply that variable, considered as CN or CON is a variable or any object that stores the connection information. Once connection is done, its property will get stored in CN variable or CON variable. So that through that variable, we can execute the queries on that data. One object of Python will be representing connection to one database. One database can be connected simultaneously from different objects. So if we have one database from Python, we can write the code to have multiple connections. But one connection will be pointing to exactly one database at a time. This object will then allow us to execute the different transaction on the database. This function accepts four parameters, namely host, user, then password and the database name. The host refers to the name of the computer or IP address of the computer where our MySQL database is located. So we need to specify the name of the host where the MySQL server or MySQL database is located. Generally, it is in our case always local host. But if our database is stored in some other computer, then we'll have to specify the name of that computer and it must be within a network or the IP address of that computer. The user parameter refers to the name of the MySQL database. The default MySQL database user is root. The password parameter refers to the password of the MySQL database we are connecting to. So generally, whatever password we have set during installation of MySQL in our system, we will have to use that password in order to connect it. If we don't specify connect username and password, we will not be able to connect to the MySQL from Python. The database refers to the name of the valid MySQL database we are connected to. So database must exist. If there is no database or database name is wrong, then it may not be connecting it to the MySQL. Or in other words, we can say during execution of the connect function, you will be getting an error. The syntax of the connect function is as follows. You will always have to write one line on the top of your code path that is import mysql.connector as Michael. Now here, we have used as Michael. This is because the lengthy name is actually renamed as MyPod. So this MySQL.connector, now it is renamed as MyPod. So instead of writing MySQL.connector every time into the code part to use its function, we can cut short it using MyPod because we have renamed it. So purpose of writing as MyPod in this first line of code is to rename the library with a new one for the program, not in actual library package. So within a program, you can use mycon if, if you want to refer to MySQL connector function. So you can see mycon.connect function is called round bracket start and the end close. Then we have to specify the parameters as host, user, password, and database. The host refers to the name of the computer or IP address of the computer where the MySQL database is located. The user parameter refers to the name of the MySQL database user. The default MySQL database user is root. The password parameter refers to the password of the MySQL database we are connecting to. And the database refers to the name of the valid MySQL database we are connecting to. In order to connect to MySQL database, in our case, we will be creating a database first. 
we must have a database created on MySQL or it must exist in a database. Let's create a Python DB database and one member table with it. So we'll have to open MySQL first. Then we'll have to write the command as create database Python DB semicolon. And if we press the enter key, we'll get a message as query OK. So database will be created. Then we have to use Python DB semicolon. So it opens up and we we'll, can create any table with it. In this case, I'm creating a members table containing member number, member name, age, and gender part. If we execute this query, a table will be created and we'll get a message query OK. And we can check using show table whether the table is created or not. So database is created, there is Python DB. After successful creating a database, a next step is to open the Python and import the required MySQL connector module and invoke connect function by passing required information as parameter. You can see in this example, I've coded as import mysql.connector as my call. Then I've used cn equals. Now in this case, cn is a variable in which the connection property will get stored. After establishing a connection, all the properties will get stored in cn. So cn throughout the program will keep a live connection and with the help of this cn, we will be executing the queries to the connected database. So cn equals mycon.connect in round bracket start close host equals to localhost all the values must be given in the single position mark comma user equals to root password equals to 1 2 3 4 5 comma database equals to python db round bracket close so if we execute this block of code then we'll be getting the messages connection successful this connection successful message appears because i have given the print statement so if first line of code is Correct. Second line of code is also correct. No issues are there in any of the parameters. Then both lines will be executed and connection will be established. The connection property will get stored in CN variable and it prints a message then connection success. Now, assume that in case you have some problem with the parameters value. Suppose you have given the code as import mysql.connector as mycon. Then CN equals to mycon.connect, round bracket set, post equals to local space host. Now local is, no, is one word, you cannot give space in between. If you give local space host, it will be considering some other system and that system if does not exist, then it will lead to an error. So here, in this block of code, local space host is given, that's an error. Comma user equals to root, then password equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, database equals to 5, 10, 3, Other parameters are correct, but one parameter is having a problem. So there will be an issue of connection. So when we execute this block of code, then this connection successful message will not appear. Instead of that, an error message will appear. And when you make a mistake in host value, you'll be getting an error as cannot connect to MySQL server. So whenever you get the error like cannot connect to MySQL server on whatever value is specified, you need to understand that you have given a wrong host. Consider an example. We have import mysql.connector as mycon. Then we have given cn equals to mycon.connect round bracket set host equals to localhost comma user equals to r double o. Instead of r double o t, I am giving r double o. That means wrong value of username. Then password equals to one two three four five. Then comma database equals to python. Data. Now when we execute this block of code, instead of connection successful message, this will be raising an error and showing an error as access denied for user. So when we get a message as access denied for user, we need to understand that the username or the password may be incorrect. You can also consider another example where I have given password incorrectly. In my case, it is 12345, but I have given in this block of code as 1245. So when we execute this block of code, again we will be getting the error, same error as access denied for the local user root because password is incorrect. Assume that. We write a block of code as import mysql.connector as mycon, cn equals to mycon.connect, round ticket start, host equals to localhost, comma user equals to root, password equals to 12345, and database equals to pythodb. I have created earlier as python db, but I have given as pythodb. So that is the wrong database name. So when we execute this block of code, which contains the wrong database name, it will be showing an error as unknown database pythodb. So wherever we get the error as unknown database, we must understand that the database name is incorrect. Now we need to understand one security concern for the MySQL version. If we download and install mysql.connect in our system, then it may work well. The connect function will work well without any issue. For the version of MySQL, less than any. 
But if you are connecting the MySQL version 8 or above 8, then it does not support the native password authentication. So you have to make sure about if you are using 8 version, then before using the connection, you have to open MySQL and type one command to change its native password setting for the root user, which is as follows. The MySQL connector Python library package works well with MySQL version less than 8.0. This module's connect raises an error with MySQL version 8. This is because the authentication method is different in new version of MySQL. The security system is different. That does not support the default MySQL native password authentication. That is what earlier it was by default. Therefore, we need to update user database of MySQL using the following command. So we'll have to open the MySQL, which is the wait version. If you are getting during connection an error, then if you have the version less than 8, no issue. But if we are connecting to MySQL 8 version database, then connect function will be raising an error even though you supply all the parameters correct. So before executing or before establishing a connection in 8 version, you must make sure you have to type this command one time after installing the MySQL 8 version. You have to type the command as alter user. So the user database will be changed. Single quotation root as a username at single quotation local host that means for local computer identified with mysql underscore native underscore password by in SQL code you will have to supply your own mysql password after that if you use semicolon and press enter key so the user database will be changed for the root user and after that it allows us connect function to connect to mysql it was in database system. Now, whenever we write a block of code in Python and when we execute the block of code, whichever block of code may be, it may be a connectivity code or something else. If an error is there, then lots of messages appears regarding this error, which are already defined by the Python system. But if you want to handle those errors, then we'll have to use a Python robust mechanism to handle the error, that is a try accept block. So a try accept block comes with the following options that is try option that is try block then accept block else block and finally block basically in try block we'll have to specify the block of code we want to execute now if all the block of code that means all lines of code specified within try block if it is executed successfully then the else block message will be executed that means if no errors are there then else part will get executed and in case any statement in try block is having some error, then the accept block will get executed, the else part will be ignored. So this way we can handle the errors that we can test some of the lines of code which is to be executed. If errors are there, we will be handling that error in the accept block. If error is not there, then we can specify else part in order to handle the situation where the error does not occur. But this else part and finally are optional. We'll have to specify try and accept that is compulsory in this block. If we don't specify else, no issue. If we don't specify finally, then do no problem. But if we don't specify the accept after try, then this will be leading an error. So this part must be used in combination. Then the finally block basically executes the task regardless of there was an error in try block or not. Suppose there are some error in the try block, then its associated accept block will get executed, and after that, the final part will get executed. But if there is no error in the try statements, then the else part will get executed, and after that, the finally will get executed. So we can handle the errors this way. This is a robust mechanism offered by the Python to handle the errors. When establishing connection in case of any parameter valuable function then the dot connect function will raise an error that's what we have seen in the previous part the error messages will be defined by the python programming language which are really different in case we want to display customized messages or we want to handle the error then we should use python robust handling error handling mechanism that is try accept consider this block of code here i have given import mysql.connector as my con then I have given try column and I have specified the statement within try that is 
there is two establisher connections cn equals to mypon.connect host equals to local user equals to root password equals to 12345 and database equals to 54 db instead of 53 db i have given 54 db so there is an error in the name of the database so error will be generated when the cn equals to mypon.connect will get executed after that the print statement executes if everything goes fine and accept block i have given print error in connection as a message when i execute this block of code i will be getting a message as error in connection instead of throwing an error you have seen in the previous part there was a problem with the database name it showed the error as invalid database name or unknown database python db but in this case this will not be throwing that entire error it will be showing you the customized message or else you can put up any block of code which you want for handling the invalid database error so this way instead of throwing the ready made error messages we can put up our customized error messages or we can handle that error and if we use try and accept block then program will not get terminated generally if we don't use try and accept block if you have any error in any line of code then that error will cause the program termination so program will be stopped but if you use try accept block then program will not term get terminated instead it continues executing and it displays the specific messages or perform some specific task that's what you probably have observed in whatsapp and any other application assume a case of whatsapp suppose you are accessing a whatsapp and there is no internet connection so as soon as you open up it shows you the a message as there is no internet connection it should of closing down the whatsapp and not showing you any assume that if it is designed that way then will not able to even get the appropriate message so error could not be handled well just like that python also offers the try accept module through which you can handle the error assume another example as import mysql dot connector as mycon then try call it cn equals to mycon dot connect round bracket host equals to local host user equals to root password equals to one two three four five database equals to five four d then accept block contains print error in connection as a message the last part i specified here is print and the connection successful message and finally thank you now if we execute this block of code where all the parameters of the cn equals to mycon dot connect are in correct then this will be displaying a message as error in connection because there is an error in the database name that is 54db and this will be executing the accept block and displaying the message stored within it that is error in connection and once accept block is executed this else part will be ignored so out of this accept and else either accept will get executed or else part will get executed in case there is an error in try block then accept will get executed in case there are no errors in the try block statement then else part will get executed accept will be ignored at that time and finally it will be executed regardless of accept block or else block so here we can see error in connection and thank you is being displayed because finally the message given as print thank you as in this case import mysql.connector as mycon try colon then in try block we have given as cn equals to mycon.connect round bracket start host equals to local host user equals to root password equals to 12345 and database equals to python db now everything is correct so here this code when executed it will be displaying a message as connection successful because try is having correct statement so accept will be ignored and else part that is connection successful will be executed Consider an example. Import mysql dot connector as mycon. Then try colon cn equals to mycon dot connect round bracket start host equals to local host comma user equals to root comma password equals to one two three four five comma database equals to python db. Now in this case everything is correct. All the parameters are correct in a statement given cn equals to mycon dot connect. When we execute this block of code, we'll be getting a message as connection successful because the try is not having an error so else part will get executed and display the message connection successful and the finally will be displaying the message thank you as it is to be executed regardless of accept or else was executed or not this way try accept block in python allows us to handle errors we generally display the appropriate error messages but apart from error messages we can also write some guard code so we can put up some additional code which can handle those errors we can call that extra code as guard code to protect and recover from error as this is the out of scope of our section we will not get into too much of this 
ETF. Is connected function. After establishing connection, if you want to verify whether the connection is successfully established and is currently connected or not, then we need to use is underscore connected function. This function accepts no argument and returns boolean value. If it is connected, then it returns true. If it is not connected, then it returns false. Consider an example. You have given me port MySQL dot connector as MyCon. Then try column cn equals to mycon dot connect round bracket start host equals to local host user equals to root password equals to one two three four five database equals to python db now every statement is correct so here the if will be testing cn dot is connected or not so connection will be established as every parameter is correct so is connected will be written in true and if the is connected method returns true for the specified cn will be even. Because connection properties are get stored in CN variable only, so we'll have to use P is connected using CN variable for whichever connection variable we have used. So CN dot is connected equal equal to true. In this case, it will be true. So this prints up the message when the program gets executed. Connection successful. Otherwise, in else part, we can put up the message as error in connection. Then in except block, we can put up print some other error or some additional code which handles some other sets of error. Cursor function. In computer science, a database cursor is a control structure that enables traversal over the records in a database. So suppose there are 10 records and you want to access all the 10 records, then you need to introduce one concept or database will be introducing one structure, we call it as a cursor, that reads or access the first, starting from the first record to the last one, one after. That's what we call cursor or the movement as it moves from first record to the last record is known as traversal. Cursor facilitates subsequent processing in conjunction with the traversal such as retrieval, addition and removal of the database records. So with the help of the cursor, we can get the data from the database, we can add that we insert some data and information or records and remove some of the database records. The database cursor characteristics of a traversal makes cursor keep to the programming language concept of an iterator that is a loop which we have already covered up in class 11. Cursor are used by database programmers to process individual rows written by the database system files. Cursor enables manipulation of the whole result set as one. So you can access all the record at once or you can access it one after. In this scenario, a cursor enables the subsequent processing of the rows in a result set. Python allows us to use cursor by invoking dot cursor function and store its information to some separate variable or object. This object will then be used to execute DDL or DML query. So with the help of this cursor, we can execute the query. It also allows us to access the result set being returned by executing the select command. So if you are executing the select command, then data and information will be returned. That's what we call result set. It will be returned to the Python and we can access with the help of that cursor. We can access it as either all at once or one after another. This dot cursor function does not accept any R. So if you want to use this cursor function, then you don't have to specify anything within round bracket search. Let's consider a cursor with the help of the diagram. Consider that this is your Python program and this is your database. A database contains some tables like users table, members tables, and courses table, etc. And this is your cursor. Now this cursor basically allows us to utilize some ready-made functions stored within it. That is execute function, fetch all function, fetch none function, close and insert update delete transactions. And this cursor will be using any of the connection which basically uses the database. The connection is already established to a database and cursor uses that connection in order to execute any of the queries from the Python program. That's how the Python database programming works. In order to create a MySQL cursor object, you will have to use any of the variable name as In this case, myCurs object equals to mycon.cursor round bracket circle. So this kind of code basically creates a cursor variable as myCUR object. Now with the help of myCUR object, we can use the functions available within it that is execute, patch one, patch all and other additional functions. So Michael object is the name of the cursor variable which will store the newly created cursor. It will later on allow us to execute DDL DML query on an active connection. Then MyCon refers to the name of the connection variable object which was used earlier to establish connection. We already used MyCon 
connection variable and that variable must be used. Cursor is the name of the function to instantiate, that means to create an instance or in other words we can say it is a part of it. That's a cursor object. Consider an example. We have import mysql.connector as mycon, then drive log cn equals to mycon.connect round that is that host equals to localhost, comma user equals to root, comma password equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, comma database equals to python. So this line of code is correct, so we get executed. After that, if you want to establish, if you want to create a cursor object, then you have to write whatever variable name in case xc1 equals to cn dot cursor. So you have to use cn dot because your connection variable is cn in this block of code. So when you execute this block of code, nothing will appear. Connection will be established, cursor object will be created, but we have not specified anything to display. Execute function. After initializing a cursor and store it in a cursor variable, we can start executing DDL, DDML commands like create, alter, draw, insert, update, delete, select, and so on to the connected database using dot execute function. This function accepts the string argument as a query and execute it on the connected database. The changes made by some SQL commands like create, alter, draw, insert, update, delete are temporary. That's what I told you earlier that if you are executing insert, update, delete, create, draw, then you must use dot commit function in order to save the changes made by the transaction. Whatever changes made by the aforesaid statements or commands will not be saved to a database until dot commit function is invoked after executing the query using the function. We can also revert the changes made by the transaction effect above transaction using rollback function of the cursor. So if we want to make the changes or if you want to save the changes made by the transaction, we should use dot commit function for the commands like the insert update and And if you want to remove the changes made by the, this transaction, then you have to use the rollback function. The commit in the rollback function will save the changes made by the transaction or else revert back the changes made by the transaction only for the DML that is insert update and delete wrong. If you want to use this execute function, the syntax of this function you'll have to follow it. Whatever cursor variable you have created, dot execute function, then long they can start to whatever SQL command you want to pass to. You can pass in double quote or you can pass a variable of string type which contains a word. Consider an example. Here we have import mysql.connector as mycon, then cn equals to mycon.connect, round bracket start, host equals to localhost, user equals to root, password equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, database equals to 5, 3. So everything seems correct for all the parameters of connect function, connection will be established. Then cur equals to cn.execute, round bracket start code. So cursor object is created and stored in cur variable. Now if you want to execute the command, suppose you want to create a table. Then we we'll have to specify the command in double quote in execute function. As cur.execute in round bracket start close, we we'll have to use in double quotation mark the create table command. Then like create tables to the round bracket start, then row r number, integer, comma name, var type, this type, that way. The way we type the command, create table command in MySQL, the same way we'll have to specify over here. And after that, we need to use cn.commit. If we don't write cn.commit, that means the connection object dot commit function. The changes made by the transaction will not get stored. If we execute this block of code, then what will happen? Assume here you have Python DB, use Python DB, and you see show tables. So it will show you only one table there, that is members. Then you run the command, or then you run the program, and you see query executed because print statement will be printing query executed message of this. After that, if you see in MySQL, use Python DB and you write a command show tables, you'll be getting two tables now. The members which was displayed before executing or which was there earlier and a new table student will be added because of this create table student statement. So this way the execute helps us to create a table. Consider an example. We have import mysql.connector as mycon, then cn equals to mycon.connect, round bracket set, host equals to localhost, user equals to root, password equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, database equals to python db. Then cur equals to cn.cursor, so cursor object is created and stored in cur. Then cur.execute, round bracket set close, I have given create table student, and the column has r number integer from a name, where 
After that, I have used cn.rollback. Now, cn.rollback function is called. So, whatever changes are made by the transaction using create table, that will be reverted back. So, before executing the program, if you see your Python TP show tables command, you will get only one table with it. Then you execute your program, you will be getting the query of executed message. And after that, if you see your database show tables command, then you will be getting the duly created table. As the rollback function does not work upon the create, alter, and drop commands because these are the DDL commands and rollback will have no effect on the DDL commands. Rollback will have only effect on the insert, update, and delete that is DML command. Consider an example. We have import mysql.connector as mycon, cn equals to mycon.connect, round bracket start, host equals to localhost, comma user equals to root, comma password equals to 12345, comma database equals to python db. Now cur equals to cn.cursor function is called, so cursor is created and stored in cur. Then cur.execute function is called by writing drop table members. And then cn.commit function is called and query message and print query executed message will update. So before executing the program, if we see the tables available in Python DB as only one that is members, then we execute the program, we will be getting the message on output screen as query executed and query will be dropping the table members and after executing the program, if we see show tables available in the Python DB, then this will be showing you empty results because earlier the members table was there, then drop table members will be dropping it and it is committed so the table will be removed from it. Consider an example we have import mysql.connector as mycon cn equals to mycon.connect round bracket start host equals to localhost comma user equals to root comma password equals to 12345 comma database equals to python db. Now cur equals to cn.cursor so cursor object is created and stored in cur then cur.execute in round bracket start so that will alter table command as alter table members, so this will be modifying the members table and it will remove one column that is drop gender and then cn.commit and print query execute message will appear. Now before executing the program if we see the description of members table we will be getting the gender column there. Now after that we execute the program so this command will get executed it will be removing the gender from the members table and we will get a message on screen after running the program as a query executed. After executing the program, we see the structure of the members table. We can see only three columns because alter table members have already dropped the gender column from the members table. So the execute function can execute the create command as well as the alter command as well as the drop command. So almost any SQL command can be executed with the help of this execute function of the cursor object. Consider an example, we have import mysql.connector as mycon, then cn equals to mycon.connect, round bracket start, host equals to localhost, user equals to root, password equals to 12345, and database equals to python db. These are the parameter values as per my system. Now cur equals to cn.cursor, so cursor object will be created, then cur.execute function is called, round bracket start close, and within it insert into members value 101, then my name and 60. So this will be inserting one record in the members table. After that, you can see cn.commit function is used because we need to save the changes made by this insert transition and we use print query executed as a message. Before executing the program, if we see what are the records in members table, by writing select star from members, it gives us an empty set because there are no records. After that, we execute the program, we will get query executed message. And after executing the program, if we see the table again by writing select star from members, we'll be getting this one record inserted. Because query is executed, insert into in members, and commit is also called. Now assume that we use import mysql.connector as mycon, cn equals to mycon.connect, round bracket start, host equals to localhost, comma, user equals to root, comma, password equals to 12345, comma, database equals to python. Then cur equals to cn.cursor. Now cur.execute round bracket start double quotation insert into members value 101 my name is So one record will be inserted. But it will be inserted for the temporary reasons. 
before executing the program if you see the records available in the members table select star from members it gives the empty result set because there are no records after that if you execute this block of code when you have used the cn dot rollback after executing the insert into command if you execute the program you will be getting the query executed message because of this print statement and after executing the program if you see the records of members table by writing select star from members you will be getting empty set again this is because whatever insert into command you have executed is actually reverted back using rollback so rollback function will be removing the changes made by the transaction which you have executed using execute function of the cursor of that's how the rollback function works consider an example we have import mysql connector as mycon then cn equals to mycon dot connect round the get start host equals to local host comma user equals to root comma password equals to one two three four five comma database equals to python db then cur equals to cn dot cursor so cursor object is created cur dot execute will be executing the delete command from members where add number equals to one two then cn dot commit in order to make the or save the changes made by the transaction that query executed to display the output screen now before executing the program we see the result or result set of the members table by writing select star from members we are getting record number 101 and 102 now we execute the program we will be getting a message as query executed and after executing the program if we see the records of the members table again by writing select star from members will be getting one record less because that record is deleted and we have used dot commit function so whatever record was about to be deleted will be deleted from that because of this commit function effect consider an example we have import mysql dot connector as mycon cn equals to mycon dot connect round take it start host equals to local host user equals to root password equals to one two three four five database equals to python db cur equals to cn dot cursor so cursor will be created cur dot execute delete from members where amp number equals to one zero so one zero to member number record will be removed but this will be on temporary basis and after that i have used cn dot rollback so when we look into the table before executing the program by writing select star from members it will show you all the records stored within it there is 101 and 102 records are there after that we execute the program we will be getting query executed message because of the spread command program will be executed successfully and if it executes it will be deleting one record from it whose member number is 102 but because of the cn dot rollback this deleted record will be stored back so after executing the program if you see the records of the members table again you will be getting all the records as it is because the delete command effects will be reverted back using the rollback function consider an example we have import mysql dot connector as mycon cn equals to mycon dot connect round the get start host equals to local host user equals to root password equals to one two three four five and database equals to python db then cur equals to cn dot cursor so cursor object is created with the help of the cn connection cur dot execute function is called to update something that is update members set m name equals radha where m number equals to other so this will be changing the value of m name member name to radha whatever the member number is one zero two and after that cn dot comment is given so changes made by this update command will be saved permanently before executing this program if we see the record by using select star from members we will be getting 101 name as my name and 102 as mohan name and after that we execute the program we get a query executed message because of this print statement and after executing the program we see in my sql the members table record will be getting 102 member number name updated to radha earlier it was mohan but because of this Commit and this update command changes made by this update command will be on permanent basis. That's why we are getting rather shown as permanent. Consider an example. We have import mysql dot connector as mycon. Cn equals to mycon dot connect round the insert. Host equals to local host. Comma user equals to root. Comma password equals to one two three four five. Comma database equals to python db. Now cur equals to cn dot cursor round the insert too. So cursor object is created. Now cur dot execute round take it start. I've given update command as update members set m name equals to radha. So, so this will be changing m name to radha wherever m number is one zero two. Then cn dot rollback function is called. So this will be reverting back the changes made by the function. 
and then print query executed message to display some message on screen. Now, before executing the program, if we see the record stored in the members table by writing select star from members, we'll be getting all the records stored within it. That you can see 102 record is having name Moha. After that, we execute the program. So, we'll be getting query executed message because of this print statement. Program is correct. So, query executed message will be displayed. And after executing the program, if we see the records of the members table again using select star from members command, then we'll be getting all the records. And there we can observe we were about to change M name as Radha Bell and the power to 102. But still, it shows 102 as Moha, which was there earlier before executing the program. This is because cn.rollback will not change the update effects permanently on the member state. Consider an example, we have import mysql.connector as mycon, cn equals to mycon.connect, host equals to localhost, comma user equals to root, comma password equals to 12345, comma database equals to python db. Then cur equals to cn.cursor, cur is not execute, cur.execute function accepts the select command as select start from members. Then print is printing query executed message. Now if you can see, before executing the program, your records are in members table as select start from members, you get all the records stored within it. You can see 101, 102 record. And after that, if you execute the program, you will be getting query executed as a message because there are no issues with the block of code given in the coding part. And after executing the program, if you see the record again using select start from members, you will be getting the same sets of records. So, select command basically does not make any changes. So, we don't have to use cn.commit or cn.rollback. While executing SQL queries, we can specify it in two different ways, namely static query, that is fixed or constant query, where the values are fixed, and the dynamic query, that means parameterized query, where the values are different, values are actually picked from the variables. Till now, whatever queries we have specified before this section, all queries were static queries in nature, that means fixed values we were supplying, whether it is insert, update, or delete. That means writing delete from members where m number equals to 102 will be removing all a record or all those records where the member number is 102 each time this query is executed. If you want to make delete query dynamic, that means we can supply different m numbers after accepting it from the user. So we want to get the m number from the user in the Python program and we want that m number or a member number to be removed from the table then we'll have to use the dynamic query instead of using the static one. There are two different ways through which we can create a dynamic query, that is a parameterized query. First way is using percentage formatting style, another one is using format function. Creating dynamic query using percentage operator is Python's old way to create dynamic query. In this method, we have to use a string query and closed in single or double quotation marks and followed by a percentage sign and the values list in round bracket slash close. There are three main parts of this method of specifying a query, namely format, percentage, sign and value. You can see, you'll have to specify the string format, then followed by a percentage sign and in round bracket, you'll have to specify the value. So the string format will be the string literal containing format of the DDL or the DML query with percentage as placeholder for which we have to select values from the list. So whenever we want to value from the values list in the string format, we'll have to use percentages or percentage D, something like that. Then the values list refers to the values of any type separated by comma. This values will be replaced for each percentage as used for the string format to form the actual query. Consider an example. We have m number variable in Python storing the value 103. m name equals to in string roll round up, then m a equals to 90. So three variables are there: m number, m name, and m age. Now you want to format the query, dynamic query, using percentage style. So you will be declaring one variable s equals to, you will give double quotation or single quotation, you write insert into member value. Then round bracket start to you can give single quotation, comma single quotation, comma single quotation. And in this single quotation, these are actually the values you will have to supply. If you have a static query, 
you will be giving fixed value. But this is a dynamic query whose value will be picked from the variable within a programming language. So we will have to specify percentages, percentages and percentages. Then double quotation complete. After that percentage sign and round bracket set close, we will have to specify the values now or the variables from which we want to pick up the values and store them. But how does it consider? Let's understand that. When we specify the first percentages, this first percentage value as value will be picked from the first value of the value list. The second percentage as value will be picked from the second value of the value list. And the third percentage as value will be picked from the third value or variable from the value list. So if you compile this, then it will be looking exactly alike. Insert into member values 103, run up and 19. This 103, run up 19 are the values stored within M number, M name and M H. And this will be picked by this percentage S. And actually, during that time, S will be storing this one, not this one. Because this is what a format, and when it gets interpreted or executed, it will be executed in this form. So this way we can form a dynamic query. Consider an example. We have m number equals to 103. m number is a variable, 103 is a value. Then s equals to delete from members where m number equals to percentage s in single quote. Double quotation complete, percentage sign, then it values this only one value, that is m number. So this percentage s will be replacing the value m number after compilation. The final string in a variable s it will be as follows that is delete from members where m number equals to 103. This 103 is actually the value of m number which is replaced by this percentage s in this form. Creating dynamic query using dot format operator is Python's new way to create dynamic queries. In this method, we have to use a string query enclosed in the single or double quotation and followed by dot format function which will contain values listed in. There are three main parts in this method of specifying a query namely format, then dot format and the value. You can see you have to specify the string, then dot format function, round bracket set to the values list. It is similar that to of the previous method but here we have to use separate function for this. So the format is the name of the function which will allow us to format the string specified. Then the string will be the string literal containing format of the DTL or DML query with indexes. So here we will have to specify the index value. And in previous time we will have to specify percentage S or percentage B like. But in this case we will have to specify the index of the values which will be selected from the values list of the format function. But placeholder must be specified using curly bracket start and curly bracket close. For which we have to select the values from the list of the format function. The values list refers to the values of any type separated by comma. These values will be replaced for each curly bracket start close depending upon the index used in the string based on the index specified to form the actual query. Consider an example. We have m number equals to 103, m name equals to Rana, and m equals to 90. Now, if we fabricate or form the query as s equals to double quotation, insert into member values, round bracket, single quotation, curly bracket start close 0, curly bracket start close 1, curly bracket start close 2. So, here curly bracket start close 0 refers to the 0th index variable from the value. List. So, after format, Whatever values we specify, whatever variable we specify, every variable is considered with its index. The first variable or value will be considered as index 0. The second variable will be considered as index 1. The third variable will be considered with the index 2 and so on. So if this 0 will get replaced with the value of m number. And this 1 will be replaced with the value of m name. And this 2 will be replaced with the value of m h. So after compilation, your insert into will be considered as insert into member values in single code 103, non up and 19. These are the values picked from M number, M A and M H. That's how this system works. Consider an example where M number equals to 103, M name equals to non up and M H equals to 19. Now if you fabricate the query as S equals to insert into members values, round bracket start close, curly bracket start close, curly bracket start close, curly bracket start close. 
and you use dot format round digit set to m number comma m name comma m a now in this case individual values from the values list are identified by sequence that means the first value will be used in the first curly bracket set rule, the second will be used in second curly bracket set rule and so on. Here the indexes are not specified. So when indexes are not specified, then it picks up in its sequence as it is specified. So first curly bracket set rule value will be replaced with M number, second curly bracket set rule value will be replaced with M name, and third curly bracket set rule value will be replaced with M name. And thereby after compilation the query will be looking at insert into member values 103 wrong and right. Consider an example. Here we have m equals to 103, m name equals to wrong and m is equals to 9. If we form the query as s equals to double quotation, insert into member values, now they can start single quotation, curly bracket start close x, comma curly bracket start close y, comma curly bracket start close z. Now they get close, double quotation complete for the string, dot format, now they can start close the value this as x equals to m number comma y equals to m name comma z equals to m. So it's clear from here that we have specified in curly bracket set rule x, y and z whose values will be picked from the values list. So the x will be replaced with m number, y will be replaced with m name and z will be replaced with m. Consider an example, we have m number equals to 103 and we have a delete query stored in variable as as s equals to double quotation delete from members where m number equals to curly bracket start plus to 0. And we have given dot format m number. So this m number will be replaced in the zero curly bracket set to zero. And the actual query will be looking at delete from members where m number equals to one zero. The difference between two methods of creating dynamic query is that the first method, that is the percentage one, we follow sequential values. That means the order of specifying percentage as in the string and the values must be same. So if we are using three percentages sign, then we have to specify three values with it. We cannot reuse the value specified in the values list again. So if we have same variable, we want it multiple times in a query, then we'll have to specify it multiple times in the value list. The second method using dot format function is index based. That means we can specify the value once in the value list and based on the index, we can use it as many as time we wish to adjust in query. Consider an example. Here we have m number equals to 103 and m name equals to 1. Now if we fabricate the query as s equals to double quotation, update member set m number equals to percentage s, comma m name equals to percentage s, where m number equals to percentage s, double quotation complete, percentage in values list. We will have to give three different values now because three percentages are there. So first value of m number. So m number will be updated using this percentage s, that is m number. And M name will be updated using this percentage as which will be replaced by M name. And again M number is there. So we will have to specify again percentage S. But this percentage S will be picking from the third parameter we have specified. This will not be picking or considering the same M number we have given. So that is the problem. But if we consider the new format where M equals to 103 in this case m name equals to runner and if you fabricate the query as equals to double quotation update members set m number equals to curly bracket start to 0 comma m name equals to curly bracket start to 1 comma where m number equals to curly bracket start to 0 dot format here we have to specify only two parameters the first is m number another one is m name because in this format function the values are actually picked using the indexes if you can see here for this m number i have given curly bracket start to 0 and for this num m number again, I have given curly bracket start to 0. So this curly bracket start to 0, whatever we use it in this print value, will be considering or replacing the value from this m number. And this curly bracket start to 1 will be replacing its value from m number. So this is an added advantage of dot format function over the percentage style for creating the dynamic queries in Python. Accessing records. The dot execute function when executes the select command on the tables or table of a database gets the relevant records retrieved at the end of the execution. That's what I told you earlier about when you execute select command from Python to MySQL, the MySQL will generate the result and send it to the Python as a result set. This record is our called result set. It will be a collection of the columns and the rows. Python 
gets the result set in a form of the list of tuples. So basically, it returns the result in a form of and stores in a form of the list of tuples. This result set can be accessed using the different methods of the cursor object. These methods are fetch one, fetch all, fetch many, and row count. The fetch one function fetches one record or one tuple from the result set. Suppose there are four records in the result set, then using fetch one functions, we can access each record starting from the first to the last one, one after the other. So if you want to access record gradually, that means one by one, then we should use this function. This function does not accept any argument and returns one record as a tuple of Python. So in order to fetch the record, you have to use the tuple variable equals to the cursor object, which we have used to execute the query, dot fetch one. So here, the tuple variable is any variable which will show the tuple retrieved using fetch1 method of the cursor object. And cursor.object.fetch1 is the variable or the system or the function invocation which basically fetch1 record and store in the table. Consider an example. We have members table containing four records stored within it. That is record number 101, 102, 103, and 104. Now if we write the code as import mysql.connector as mycon. CL equals to mycon dot connect round the insert host equals to local host user equals to root password equals to 12345 database equals to my python db. CUR equals to CL dot cursor then CUR dot execute select star from members. So this will be actually fetching entire table all the records and columns of that table and storing in CUR variable. After that I use x equals to CUR dot fetch one. So this will be fetching the first most record of the result set and you can see the first mode record of the result set is 101 my name and 61. After that, if I use print record extract at comma x, so x will be displayed as a tuple. When you execute this block of code, you'll be getting record extracted message column, the tuple that is containing 101, my name and 61. So fetch one method, fetch only one record at that. Consider an example. We are writing the code as import mysql.connector as mycon, then cn equals to mycon.connect, round deck extract, host equals to localhost, user equals to root, password equals to 12345, database equals to python db. Now if we execute the command using cursor as cur equals to cn.cursor and cur.execute select start from members. So this will be fetching all the records of members table. After this, we use x equals to cur.fetch1, so this will be bringing the first record of the result set, that is 101. And after that, if you use print record expected x, then it prints the first message 101, my name and 60. Then again, if you write the command as x equals to cur dot patch one, then you print it. You will be getting the next record patch from the result set. If you call this function patch one again and store the value in x, the third record will be patched and displayed. If you call it again, the fourth record will be patched and displayed. That's how it goes. So all four records will fetch and display but one after the other because we have coded in that way using fetch one function. Now assume that in this block of code we have used import mysql.connector as mycon then cn equals to mycon.connect round that it start host equals to local host user equals to root password equals to 12345 and database equals to python db. Then cur equals to cn.cursor. Now cur.execute round that it start to select start from members so this will be bringing the result set rows and columns of the members table storing in cur variable then cur.fetch1 will be fetching first record and storing in x variable and it will be displayed similarly if you call this fetch1 multiple times like first time second time third time fourth time and fifth time but there are four records that are only in the members table so first four records will be fetched and displayed after that if you fetch one one more time then this will be fetching none from the cursor that is cur variable and storing none variable and printing none because no more records are there after both records. Suppose there are four records in a result set then using fetch all function we can fetch all the records starting from the first record to the last one. So if we want to fetch records all together then we should use this function. This function does not accept any argument written all records in python as a list of numbers. So you have to specify the list of tuple variable, any variable thing equals to cursor object dot fetch one. Consider an example. If you write import mysql.connector as mycon, 
CDN equals to my account dot connect round bracket start post equals to local host user equals to root password equals to one two three four five database equals to Python db. CUR equals to CN dot cursor so cursor is created. CUR dot execute will be executing the command and select star from members. So this will be bringing all the records stored within the members table. Right now we have four records within it, so all four records will be fetched in CUR wiki. After that, in order to fetch and store all four records from CUR variable, we will have to use CUR.patchAll. So all four records will be fetched and stored inside X variable. And after that, if you print record expected as X, then you will be getting a message as C, list of tuples. This is a list showing you the tuples. There is first tuple, second tuple, third and fourth tuple. Let's set an example. You have import mysql.connector as mycon. cn equals to mycon.connect round bracket star. Post equals to localhost. User equals to root. Password equals to 12345. Database name equals to Python name. Then cur equals to cn.cursor is created. Then cur.execute. So query will be executed. Select star from members. After that, if you use x equals to cur.patchall. So all records will be passed and stored in variable x, but in a form of list of tuples. So if you want to access records one after other which actually fetch all by the statement fetch all then you will have to use the loop or you need to use traversal that is for variable in x so this row variable will be fetching one by tuple from x and then it will be displayed you can see the result there are four records which are fetched and stored inside variable x and this loop will be fetching one one record and will be displayed one one tuple from so this way we can access the individual records after fetching all records. Consider an example. We have import mysql.connector as mycon, then cn equals to mycon.connect, round bracket start, host equals to localhost, user equals to root, password equals to 12345, database equals to Python name. Then cur equals to cn.cursor, then cur.execute will be executing the command and select star from members. And x equals to cr.patchup will be fetching all the records and storing in x variable. After that, if you print it, then it will be printed as a list of tuples. And after that, if you use patch all function again from the same cursor, this will be leading an error. That is no result set to patch from. So once you use patch all, you cannot use any other function for patching the records further. Otherwise, it will be leading an error. Suppose there are four records in a result set, then using fetch many function, we can fetch specified number of records. Like four records are there, and you want to fetch three records only, so we have to use fetch many function. Starting from the active record, number position. So if you want to fetch records in the set, then we should use this function. This function accepts an integer argument indicating total number of records to be fetched from the active record number and return all records as the python list of tuples the syntax of this function is you have to specify list of tuples variable equals to cursor object dot patch many in the bracket size the size indicates the number of records to be fetched consider an example we have import mysql dot connector as mycon then cn equals to mycon dot connect round bracket start post equals to localhost user equals to root password equals to one two three four five database equals to python db then cur equals to cn dot cursor so cursor is created then cur dot execute query is executing select star from members will be fetching all the records from the members table and x equals to cur dot fetch many three so there are four records four records will get stored in cur but out, out of this four record the first three record will be fetched and stored in x variable you can see the 101 record 102 tuple and 103 tuple is stored in variable x because of fetch many in the value. Consider an example. We have my import mysql.connector as mycon. cn equals to mycon.connect round bracket start. Post equals to localhost. User equals to root. Password equals to 12345. Database equals to Python db. cur equals to cn.cursor. Then cur.execute select star from members. We'll be fetching all the records and storing inside cur. Then x equals to cur.patch many three. That means the first three records will be fetched from the cur and stored in x variable and if you use record expected it will be printing the record expected 1 2 and 3 that is 101 102 and 1031 and after that if you write x equals to cur dot patch many 3 now there are actually four records first three are fetched and there is one more record remaining now 
and here we have specified the statement as batch many in the bracket 3. So next three records should come, but there is only one record left in the result. So the fetch many will be fetching the remaining record. Either three record or the remaining number of records, De depending upon if there are less number of records compared to the specified one. So this second time record extracted will be printing x value. You can observe here the remaining record are fetched and this. Consider an example, we have import my scooter connector as my phone, then cn equals to my phone dot connect round digit set, host equals to localhost, comma user equals to root, comma password equals to one two three four five, comma database equals to Python db. Cur equals to cn dot cursor, so cursor object is created. After that, cur dot execute round digit set close, select star from members, so all the records of the members table will be fetched and stored inside cur. If you write x equals to cur dot fetch many three, so first three records will be fetched in and stored inside x that will be dismissed through this print command and then if you write x equals to cur dot fetch many three as there are four records only three are already fetched one is remaining that will be fetched in second time and will be displayed you can observe here the first three record are displayed for the first record extracted message then the remaining record 104 is displayed using the second print statement and after that if you write x equals to cur dot fetch many three now no more records are there so instead of showing an error, the fetch many will be bringing the empty list and will be storing empty list in variable x and displaying the empty list option. So unlike fetch all, the fetch many will not throw an error even if there are no records within it. Consider an example, you have import mysql.connector as mycon, then cn equals to mycon.connect, round bracket start, post equals to localhost, comma user equals to root, comma password equals to 12345, comma database equals to python db. Then cur equals to cn dot cursor. Then cur dot execute select star from members will be bringing all the records of the members table. There are four records now. Now x equals to cur dot fetch one. This will be fetching the first record of the cursor. That is one zero one record. And if you use print statement to print the value of x, it will be printing the first record only. That is first couple. Then y equals to cur dot fetch many. So now. This statement will be fetching the next two records because one record is already fetched. Now three more records are left to be fetched. So we can use either fetch or, or we can use fetch many by specifying the numbers to be fetched. So here in this case two is specified. So after first record 102 and 103 are there. Two records will be fetched and will be stored in variable y and will be displayed. You can see as an output screen. So that's how. The cursor reading certain records and using one function and after that we are using some other function to fetch other sets of records then it will be continuing from the active record. When you fetch the result set in a cursor variable then the active record will be the first record of the result set. When you fetch one record of it the active record will be the second record of the result set. And after fetching one record, if you are fetching other records, it will be starting from the second record. That's how it works. Consider an example. We have import mysql.connector as mycon, then cn equals to mycon.connect, round bracket start, host equals to localhost, user equals to root, password equals to 12345, database equals to Python db. Cur equals to cn.cursor, then cur.execute, round bracket start close, select star from members. So member table record will be fetched and stored inside cur. Now if you use cur dot fetch many in the bracket 2. So first two records will be fetched from it and stored in x. If you print x you will see the first two records are fetched. After that if you use y equals to cur same cursor dot fetch one. So this will be bringing the third record then, because two records are already fetched. Now, now the active cursor is on third record. So the third record will be fetched and it will be displayed on output screen. Now if you use import mysql.connector as mycon then cn equals to mycon.connect round bracket start now host equals to localhost user equals to root password equals to one two three four five database equals to python db then cur equals to cn.cursor now cur.execute round bracket start to select start from member so all the records of the members table will be fetched and will be stored in cur variable then x equals to cur.fetch1 will be fetching one record and storing inside x variable and then displayed. So you can see one record is displayed there. After that y equals to cur.fetch all is used. 
So y equals to c1 dot fetch or will be fetching the remaining records which are to be fetched because one record is already fetched using fetch one. So after fetch one, if you invoke fetch all, so from the active current cursor position, it will be fetching the remaining records. So you can see 102 record, 103 and 104 records are fetched using fetch all statement and stored inside y variable which is printed. That's how it works. Now assume that you have an example as import mysql.connector as mycon cn equals to mycon cn equals to mycon.connect down that is host equals to localhost user equals to root password equals to 12345 database equals to mycon if you write cr equals to cn.cursor cr.execute select star from members cr.execute select star from members so this will be fetching all the record of the members table and storing inside cur variable and after that if you write x equals to cur dot fetch all so this will be fetching all the records and storing inside variable x after that if you print you will be getting all record displayed there after that if you write x equals to cur dot fetch all you have already fetched all the records and after fetching all the record if you use fetch one or fetch many then it will be returning either empty list or none the fetch one will be returning none and storing inside y and if you print y you will be getting none because four records are already fetched all the records are already fetched before fetching one from the same class you have to make sure you want to read the record one after another or in few records at a time or you want to access all the records if you are accessing from the same cursor it will be fetching from the active current cursor position python also offers an additional property namely row count which returns an integer indicating total number of records fetched from the cursor object. If no record is fetched, then this function will be returning minus one. So in order to use this property, you will have to use integer variable equals to cursor object, then dot row count property. Consider an example. You have import mysql.connector as mycon, then cn equals to mycon.connect, round bracket start. Host equals to localhost, user equals to root, password equals to 12345, and database equals to PythonDB. After that, I've used cur equals to cn.cursor and I'm executing the query as cur.execute, round bracket start close, select star from members. So this will be fetching all the records of the members table and storing inside of the cursor. And x equals to cur.row count. Now this will be returning the number of rows fetched from the cur variable and storing in x variable. So if you print total number of records fetched and print x, you will be getting minus 1 because in this example, no records are fetched. If you consider an example, your import mysql.connector as mycon, then cn equals to mycon.connect, round bracket start, host equals to localhost, user equals to root, password equals to 12345, database equals to python Then cur equals to cn.cursor. Now cur.execute, round bracket start, select star from members, y equals to cursor dot patch one so first record is fetched from the cursor after that if i write x equals to cur dot row count so this will be returning one that means the total number of records we have fetched and if you print it you will be getting as a result total records fetched that is one consider an example import mysql dot connector as mycon then cn equals to mycon dot connect round bracket start post equals to localhost user equals to root password equals to one two three four five database equals to python db now cur equals to cn dot cursor now c cursor dot execute select star from member so this will be fetching all the records from the members table storing inside cur variable after that if you write y equals to cur dot fetch many two so from the cursor it will be fetching two records and after that if you write x equals to cur dot row count so this will be returning two because two records are fetched within it and if you print it on screen you will be getting number of records fetched there. Consider an example, you have import mysql.connector as mycon, then cn equals to mycon.connect, round bracket start, host equals to localhost, user equals to root, password equals to 12345, database equals to python Now, cur equals to cn.cursor, so cursor is created. Now, let's execute the query at cur.execute, double quotation, select star from members. So, this will be fetching all the records from the members table. Now, if you use y equals to cur.platform, so all records are fetched and stored inside variable 1. So four records are there in a the table, four records are fetched. After that, if you write x equals to cur dot row count and you print it, you'll be getting that is 4. So number of whichever number of records are fetched, the row count will be returning that value. So using this row count function, we will come to know how many records we have fetched from the result side. Consider an example, we have 
import mysql.connector as mycon then cn equals to mycon.connect round they get start host equals to localhost user equals to root password equals to 12345 database equals to byte now cur equals to cn.cursor cur.execute select star from members so all the records will be fetched and stored inside cur cursor now if you write y equals to cur.fetch many two after that you write z equals to cur.fetch one so first two records are fetched using fetch many then the next that is third record is fetched using the fetch one after that if you write x equals to cr.row count so three records are already fetched so row count property value will be three so if you display it you'll be getting three there controlling transaction the commit function and rollback functions are used to control the transactions these functions are invoked using the connection objects when we execute dml commands like insert update and delete to the connected database using dot execute function the changes made by this sql command are temporary so whatever changes are made by the inside of the delete are temporary from python to mysql until and unless we execute commit function that means whatever changes made by the aforesaid command will not be saved to a database until that commit function is invoked after executing query using the execute function we can also revert back the changes made by the above transaction using dot rollback function of the cursor object the dot commit and dot rollback function will save the changes made by the transaction and or revert back the changes made by the transaction only for the dml that is insert update and delete command this we have already covered up earlier so we will not look into in detail close function the close function is used to close the connection which was opened by the dot connect function this is the last function to be invoked at the end of the transaction for the connecting when this function is invoked it makes sure all resources occupied by the python and mysql are ready so generally when we establish connection there are many additional programs are executed in the background for connection which helps the connection or which helps the queries to pass on uh, from python to mysql and vice versa so we must release all this so in order to release all these occupied resources we need to use close function before invoking this method we must make sure that we have invoked dot commit function to save all the changes we have made to the transaction from our program so before invoking the close function we must make sure that we invoke the commit function so whatever changes made by the transaction within a program using the dml statement should get stored within it in case we don't invoke the commit function and we close it directly then changes why should be temporary basis and will be removed and will not be saved in the database this method does not accept any argument and we need to invoke it through the connection object we have created earlier so we'll have to write this connection object variable dot close function now we get started consider an example we have import mysql dot connector as mycon then cn equals to mycon dot connect round we get start host equals to local host user equals to root password equals to one two three four five and database equals to python db now cur equals to cn dot cursor so cursor is created cur dot execute select star from members so this will be bringing the record from the members table now x equals to cur dot fetch all then record this means all the records will be fetched and stored in that inside x variable and it will be displayed after that we need to write cn dot close so at the end of it we'll have to invoke it always in order to release the resources occupied for the data process so if you execute this block of code your program will be printing all the fetch records from the member state so this is a systematic way to connect as well as close the database connection as we are aware that the function like fetch one fetch all and fetch many returns tuples and list of tuples it can be accessed using indexes the index will be either backward or the forward we need to recall this concept we have studied earlier consider an example import mysql dot connector as mycon then cn equals to mycon dot connect round bracket set host equals to local host user equals to root password equals to one two three four five data will equals to python data after that cur equals to cn dot cursor so cursor is created as cur then cur dot execute double quotation the command l select star from members so this will be executing the select command and bringing all the records from the cur variable then we can use x equals to cur dot fetch one so one record will be fetched and stored inside x variable and if you want to print the individual values stored within the first tuple which we have fetched see one tuple will be the collection of values like columns m number m name and age so 
When you use patch one, this basically fetches the first record. Of. But one record is composed of different data, and if you want to access the individual data which you have stored in variable x, you will have to specify the indexes. You can use backward indexes or the forward indexes which we have studied earlier in the level start. So if you want to print member number, you can use x of zero because you are aware about the first values of member number from for within each and every record. And member name you have to give x of one. Then in member age you have to use x of two. So all these values individually can be accessed.